before we get to the build part of the video i just wanted to show you the wheel and i like it a lot uh, it just feels right in the hand there's a few wheels where i've just almost immediately felt like they just feel right uh, that applies to this momo wheel granted i may be a little bit biased because i've been using this wheel in my race car so uh, that may be why it feels so right off the bat uh, the other wheels where, where I felt the same about was the, the Thrustmaster 599, which is a round wheel, and the uh, and the Fanatec uh, BMW, I think M2 wheel, something like that. Um, it's just uh, the Alcatara is very comfortable on those wheels, and they're they're uh, they're the right size for my hand. Uh, so really like the wheel, but I also love having the dashboard. On the wheel because in some of the sims that I play to get the right uh, point of view for uh, uh, for these screens um, the dashboard falls under my, my field of view so I can't really see the, the dashboard in the uh, in the sim while, while I'm driving with uh, the, the triple monitors not a problem with here obviously but for the triple monitor I can't see them so I like to have a dashboard on my wheel uh, so this wheel of course all the buttons work you have a uh, four buttons six if you count the uh, the button function on the encoders and then you of course have two bi-directional encoders here which is more than i need especially since i do have uh, uh, quite a lot of button boxes which i use also uh, and uh, the since this is a phone and what i'm using here is uh, sim dashboard software uh, that has a really cool feature on it, which, uh, um, which allows you to load new dashboards really easily on here. Like now I have, I think this is the McLaren F1 dashboard, which I really like, and it's pretty much the only dashboard I use. But let's say that I wanted to try another dashboard, like for instance, the Motec dashboard, which I have in my car. Uh, and I just uh, double click here, go to the menu and select scan community design uh, go on the website find the design that i like which is the one i have here i don't know how well you can see that on the on the recording probably not great but there's also a uh, a scan code there so when i want to load a new dashboard i could go into the menu and flip through all the dashboards and select one or i can just hit here scan with camera and this is the phone and there's a camera here on the back i can just point it towards the code it sees the code offers me to install it hit install and there you have it i got a new dashboard uh, very in easy uh, selection of new dashboards uh, and yeah uh, i really really like this wheel it's kind of i think getting all the things that i want out of a wheel here it's of course it's the same wheel as in my race car which is great because you get uh, more muscle memory around using the, that wheel uh, but also it has a screen which which my race car does not have but uh, it's it's very uh, good for for the purpose of a sim because in the sim i don't just play around with the simulation of my car i play around with the simulation of a lot of cars and sometimes i lose the dashboard because of the screen setup so I uh, really like that feature and uh, having the buttons within easy reads. I would have liked having buttons up here also. Uh, like in my car, I have four buttons. They're up here and down here. But I, I couldn't fit buttons up here uh, once I got the uh, the screen in. Because this is a smaller wheel than my previous wheel. If you've see the if you seen the build video or any of my videos where I'm using the previous wheel, it is bigger. So up here, I got buttons also, and I also have encoders here on the sides, which I can hit. I didn't really use the encoders, and so when I built that wheel, uh, I built it with a control module, which didn't really allow me to use encoders, or at least I couldn't get them to work. For this one, I used a different uh, uh, different control board, which is an Arduino Leonardo, and uh, um, it, it, in the build video you, you'll see what that is and you can use that uh, the point is if you have if you've built the old wheel and you want the the side encoders to work up here or the bottom encoders uh, all you have to do really is replace that control board with the arduino board i will say though 
it is a more involved process of uh, installing that board. Uh, I could do it though, so you probably can also. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess we'll just jump into the, the build video now. Uh, I hope you like this. Uh, I have been thinking about making a version of this uh, wheel button box which also has handles because as I've been building it and I've seen the, where the paddle shifters here are, uh, they are uh, they are pretty well attached to the the uh, to the button box and I think really I could make like a handle version which would just be either part of the the uh, uh, paddle shifter module or would attach in that area relatively easily so I'm thinking about doing that but uh, I, I won't be using it since this is my wheel uh, I might at some point uh, so just if you if you think that might be a good idea or something that you might want to try give me a, a shout in the in the comment sections and i'll see if i can i can do there i think it might be a good idea because it would be very modular so you can use the the either a uh, momo wheel or the wheel that i had before or uh, various kinds of of handles that you can print for for that same thing now i hope you enjoy, enjoy the video hope you uh, maybe built your own wheel which would be great uh, if so leave me a comment it's always nice to see uh, but better yet maybe you'll make your own build video which is better than mine uh, which would be even better thanks for watching and i uh, hope you enjoy the build here's the front plate uh, straight out of the printer i'm uh, removing the uh, supports there uh, just put the scooter in where, where it's convenient. The sp stickiness of the sports is going to vary quite a bit between uh, 3D printers. So uh, what's easy for me might be hard for you and vice versa. Uh, anyway, you don't really have to uh, be too careful around the edges because uh, the, uh, uh, there's a cover that will hide any, any damage you might do while removing the, the supports. And anyway, putting in the first button there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, lot of cutting and a lot of uh, fast forwarding in this because it's a rather boring, boring session of uh, installing buttons and uh, worse yet soldering. I'm not a fan of soldering. I'm pretty bad at it, so it takes me a while. Uh, but somehow I managed to cut down a, a close to two hour session of solder soldering into, into this video. Uh, so I did put the pin set on there. Uh, which was helpful for me because uh, I also got wires that have connectors that connect to those pins. And since I wasn't entirely sure of what the uh, wiring should be because I was adapting a a, uh, uh, a different, um, I guess, program to my needs there, different buttons. So I put I soldered the pin set on there on both sides, uh, cut the other out of the video, but uh, basically same process. And that allowed me to move around the wires, uh, which I had to do a bit. Uh, once I had gotten everything connected, I found that not all of the buttons are func or were, were functioning as I thought or, or wanted. So I did move around a little bit of the wiring to get it um, to get it working. Uh, now, if you uh, if you look at the uh, um, the diagram uh, that I'm going to put up uh, right now. Uh, you'll see the correct wiring. So if you if you follow this wiring diagram, uh, you should be good to go, and then you can skip all of this uh, uh, this uh, the pin pin soldering and just solder the wires directly. Which is a better way to go. I found it a little bit easier when I did that because I did that uh, this board that you're seeing me connecting there. I uh, accidentally broke it while I was uh, trying to force down a cable and broke the, the uh, USB connector off it. So I had to do it again, but at that time I had figured out all the all the correct wiring, so I, uh, I didn't do it with the with these pin sets. Instead, I just uh, got the cables and sol soldered the ones that I wanted uh, directly to where I wanted them. Uh, the, the added benefit of doing it that way also is that it saves a lot of space. Uh, you can fit it in with the with the uh, pins, uh, as you'll see here later when, when I put it in the uh, put thing, the thing together. But uh, uh, if you skip the pins and solder directly, uh, you'll just have much more room and flexibility on on positioning the device. So 
So it's good to get a little bit of organization around the cables I found. And when I did my first wheel, I just left everything a mess in there. And uh, uh, it uh, kind of obstructed the camera on the phone because a wire went over it. So it didn't really work as well as I wanted it to. So I decided to do a little bit of uh, wire management in there. Uh, there I'm uh, uh, putting the hub in. Um, I did a little bit wrong there because you need to put the wheel in first. Uh, so I'm just figuring out the wires around that, making sure that I'm not uh, um, uh, squashing any wires or uh, getting anything uh, where I don't want it. So more more wire management. Get the wheel back in there, and then the uh, then the hub back on. Uh, can see there at the top of the picture that the space that uh, the Arduino takes when you have the wires on there it's uh, it's pre pretty excessive um, but still uh, this this button box does have room for it so if you want to go that route especially if you want to add buttons that I don't have or maybe two more encoders less buttons something like that uh, and in those scenarios you may want to uh, you may not get the wiring 100% correct the first time uh, and then it's good to have that flexibility of just moving the jumpers around. If you want to do that also, highly recommend checking the video Then I'm going to link to the video that I used to follow uh, uh, that had the uh, the code for the Arduino uh, and also uh, the mapping of, of the soldering which, uh, which, which I used but of course, uh, I didn't use all the buttons from there, so it's a little bit different here. Uh, that, that's for a button box with many, many, many more functions. Um, uh, also, if you watch my previous uh, build, previous wheel, wheel build, you'll uh, uh, notice that in that one, I used a different control board, which I wasn't able to get the, con uh, the uh, encoders working on that. But if you have that wheel and you want to get the encoders working, then this is the one you should be looking at. Uh, this this Arduino and uh, uh, this uh, I guess pin set or or soldering. Uh, see there, I got uh, the wires a little bit too high on the wheel there, clamped down, so it was uh, actually pushing up the phone a little bit. So I had to uh, loosen up the screws there and uh, tuck in the wires. Not not a big deal, but you'll run into small problems like that while you're putting it together because it is it is a bit of a tight fit and sometimes you just have to take one step backwards to take two forward um, then i'm connecting it uh, everything soldered up and i'm just figuring out uh, placement for everything this is not the same cable that i used uh, for the first build i think there's only a little bit it's definitely uh, uh, stiffer, a uh, little bit longer. I think it's a better cable. I link to it in my um, uh, in the description, of course, so you can get the same one if you want to. You can also get the one uh, I used for the previous wheel. It was good enough. It was uh, was a little bit more flexible. So if that's what you want, uh, go with that. But it is a little was a little shorter. I wanted something slightly longer. Uh, but that said, the length of the cable really didn't impair use at all. Uh, so um, I, I guess the old one is is plenty good if you if you already have that. Um, here I'm uh, gluing in the phone, um, centering it, and then just using some hot glue to both uh, keeping in place and also just to uh, make sure that there's not going to be any vibration or, or uh, of the phone or movement. Uh, and. Uh, that of course no one wants to watch glue dry so there's going to be a cut, cut here real quick and then I clean up some of that messy glue with with a um, uh, eraser blade I don't know if that was really necessary there's uh, uh, I didn't actually try and fit the cover on before I just cleaned it up so you may want to just do that put the cover on and see if there's anything impeding it if not I guess the cleanup is unnecessary um, so now I pull out those two screws there uh, to put the cover plate on um, or I guess really didn't 
need to put them in originally, but I did put all of the screws in because I wanted to make sure that uh, they would all be lined up later on. So put all of the screws in before I tightened everything up real, real good. Uh, and here's the cover plate coming on. Starting to look uh, um, like a wheel, or at least uh, close to that. There we go, and that's kind of that is the uh, the actual location that I ended up with there on on the USB hub. It's a good USB hub. Uh, if you look at read the descriptions uh, on the link, it does say that it's not for charging. But it seems to be plenty for charging at least the phone that I have in there. So uh, uh, it works well. It charges the phone and uh, also can get data, but uh, I don't really use the phone for that. I just use it for the dashboard. And sure, it's a, it's a tight fit, but it does fit that way with the, um, with the uh, pin, pin sets. I did put a lot of glue on there. It's uh, made it a little harder to get it out when once I broke off the USB. Uh, but uh, of course you won't do that, so that won't be a problem for you. I'm just trying to tuck in the rest of the wires there. Uh, it's good to get that, get them at least in a place where, they, where they're not going to move around, uh, both for when you're uh, uh, closing it up, and also if you want the functionality of the, uh, of the camera. Uh, So you can see the camera there on the phone uh, to the left when my fingers are, uh, there we go. So see the camera there on the left and then the round thing to the right of that is the power button. Uh, there's a, there's a pass through button which I put in the back plate which uh, gives you access to use that button on the uh, from the wheel which is, which is very convenient, uh, works really well. Uh, but if the wires are loose in there then those can get tangled up. Uh, and you don't want that. So moving on to the back plate here, uh, and the um, the paddle shifters. These are the same paddle shifters as in my last build, so I'm not going to cover how to assemble them or print them here. You can look at. I'll probably link in the description to to that uh, section of those videos, so you can check that out if you need to. Um, there's a little bit of trick on putting these pad paddles on. So um, there's holes in the paddle shifters which will capture the uh, the nut there uh, but to get them in because it's really tight you can't really push them in uh, what you do is just put the screw through and then uh, screw the nut until the nut uh, gets caught and it, you'll pull it into the uh, the paddle shifter uh, at which point you can uh, here I'm just showing you the length of the screw it looks like it's like what's that five eighths something like that so I'm taking the screw out again. I think these are three millimeter screws, if I remember correctly, but uh, might be wrong. Um, and there you go. So it, once screwed in, it's the the nuts are flush with the uh, paddle shifter, so that they, you don't feel them when you're when you're using the shifters. Um, had one prepared uh, previously, like a like a good uh, TV chef. Here I'm cleaning up the prints. Uh, for on the back plate because this is a tight fit and um, the first layer tends to get smudged down a little bit so that's really what I'm cleaning up there cleaning up that first layer is just a little bit of, of uh, filing uh, around the edges uh, and, and you'll know if you got a if you got a really good print on these because uh, when you do put in the paddle shifter uh, and you have a have a really nice and tight tight uh, uh, print, uh, you'll get a, an audible click when they snap in place and they're really secured in there. There you go. Now oh, it's locked in. Uh, I do put screws in also to keep them in place. Uh, <laughs> on that note, that reminds me, I did actually forget to do that on this build, put those screws back in. Uh, but um, you should, uh, and uh, put them there. They are in the other build. You can see the holes there on the side of the paddle shifters. That is to put the uh, the securing screws in for the uh, paddle shifters. Now, because they are 
tight and they kind of snap in place I probably won't worry about it until they they come loose if they come loose at all but uh, there there are uh, holes there uh, pretty much for that purpose to uh, to make sure they don't go anywhere so you may want to put those screws in there I'm putting in the uh, the pass through button for the phone uh, don't forget that did have a little bit of trouble with getting it in there because uh, it got caught in a wire so again important just to uh, glue those in place so they're not in the way uh, we are pretty much on the final stretch of getting it together um, the next step will be uh, to go through the software uh, how to program the Arduino to actually work uh, uh, and there, uh, the video that I went, that I used to help me with this, um, did assume some knowledge there, uh, which uh, I didn't have. So I decided to do a section on that, to to walk you through that process. Although I do highly recommend again that you do watch that video because it's great. It's got uh, much better diagrams for wiring, especially if you're going to do anything different from me, with more encoders, different buttons, whatever. Uh, then. Uh, that's really your your source source of truth there. So yeah, that is one wheel ready to use. Well, once the software is in. So the instructions I used to build the button box uh, are fantastic, but they make some assumptions on knowledge which I didn't have. So I'm going to try and fill in the gap here a little bit. You should. Uh, uh, watch that video also it's got much better diagrams of the wiring than I have uh, and especially if you're going to be making any changes or adding buttons etc uh, that's going to be your source of truth now uh, the first assumption it makes is that you have the arduino.ide software sorry just arduino IDE software and uh, I didn't uh, but that's easy enough it's uh, on the arduino.cc site a link to it also and you want to grab what's in here in this greenish box that should be the latest stable I believe now once you've installed that on your computer you should uh, download of course also the the joystick library that's linked to in these the other descriptions uh, and and probably in mine also and uh, the uh, the sketch file that they provide there uh, that's really the thing that maps uh, the the inputs to to a, a, a joystick device. Um, so you need to uh, download those. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and open the the sketch file, which is uh, which I've got here ready. Uh, if you double click that, it's going to open the Arduino app. Also, you could open the Arduino app and then the file uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, but when you do open it from here, it's going to give this error message that it needs to be in a specific folder. You just hit OK. It'll create that folder. No big deal. Uh, we make this a little bit more visible here. Uh, now, this is the file that you need to get on your Arduino for everything to start working. However, before you do that, you need these two libraries to be installed. Uh, and they aren't by default. So one of the libraries, the joystick.h here, uh, that's the one that you downloaded potentially from, from I think, SourceForge and, um, no, sorry, GitLab. And uh, uh, you can install that by going to Sketch and hit Include Library. Hmm. It's just, just weird sorting there. I can't see it on the screen here because Anyway, uh, let's see if I move this up a little bit. Um, here. Yeah, include library at dot zip library. So click that, select zip file, and everything gets installed. Pretty simple. Or uh, by everything, I mean the joystick library. Uh, the keypad library was not provided after some searching on the internet. I did find it though, also a GitLab repository for it, but uh, through that searching, I found an easier way. And that is just to click tools, uh, go to manage libraries, 
and then type in the type in the library name and this is keys this is case sensitive and just keep keypad right yep and um, it'll, it'll uh, pop up with uh, a bunch of results that have a keypad in the name but you want to find the one that's uh, uh, an exact match so you just scroll down until you find it and uh, there it is so select that and install now uh, that's it uh, maybe the joystick library is also available here let's check that out uh, it's not how I did it because I was trying to figure things out as I went but oh there it is this is uh, mm, it's probably not the same one because it says install here or maybe it's just because I installed it a different way anyway it is a it is a likely candidate anyway uh, that's not not how I did it so uh, this is how I did the keypad one and the joystick one I did by uh, by going to sketch and installing through zip um, well now you have the library set up here and you are ready to to install it on your Arduino to do that uh, first be very careful because if you push it to all the wrong Arduino you are potentially going to be permanently damaging that device uh, so again be very careful I am a little bit paranoid on this so I just unplug any other Arduino that I have before I start because I know I have others I have a motion platform that uses an Arduino Uno and I have a handbrake that uses an, an Arduino Leonardo uh, now if you go to ports here it should list all the serial ports that are in use uh, if there's only one thing that pops up there and it's uh, and you're sure that the only thing you have connected is the is the uh, the button box for the wheel that you just created then that's most likely what you have uh, what you should do to uh, to make sure select it and get port info it should tell you what Arduino board uh, it has there I don't know what it will do if it wasn't an Arduino board most likely an error uh, but that's that's a little bit beyond my my uh, knowledge there so uh, the board that you have if you bought the pro micro board that I linked to is the Arduino Leonardo here that was another point of confusion for me to figure out which board it was but eventually I figured out just select the comp when I uh, was 100% sure that uh, I had the right comp port and then, uh, then I could just which I did by by uh, unplugging it going into device manager and then keeping an eye on what popped up uh, then selecting that to get port info gave me the info that it was an Arduino Leonardo uh, which I have selected now so this is now ready for me to flash the port so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I get an error oh no but I'm stubborn so I'm gonna try again because well I got a different error now uh, access denied I guess the uh, device is being in, is in use or something just gonna try it again there we go there we go I don't necessarily understand these errors but uh, do generally get an error the first time I, I hit it uh, the second time you, most of the time it goes through a uh, couple of times it's been on the third try I have no idea why that why that's the case but you may have heard there the uh, the familiar sound of Windows disconnecting a device and connecting a device that was uh, the board getting flashed so now I should have a new uh, new device uh, new uh, joystick device or gamepad device game controller so uh, to test that uh, I'm gonna just uh, hit my here window search button and type in set that'll pop up uh, that set up USB game controller option that is in control panel but obviously you could just go through control panel and find it there if you have a Fanatec device you could just uh, open the Fanatec control panel because that's basically what it is it's the same thing yeah, that's built in, in built into windows uh, now I need to find my Leonardo is here at the bottom this window tends to be a little bit buggy but there it is uh, even though it's 
scrolled there it's still selected so I can hit properties you can see it's still there so I'll hit properties here it is so this should represent the buttons uh, that are, are mapped in that in that joystick device of course I don't have all of them on my on my wheel but if I press any of the ones on my wheel should see them light up there yeah they're lighting up encoders blink there yeah. all good so it's working that's pretty much all there is to it Thank <laughs> you.